you know, the simple fact is that we've got very good prospective data now that demonstrates on average people with the highest LDL levels live the longest. How on God's green earth can ApoB be such a problem? So we need to go back to biochemistry a little bit. And first of all, ApoB is a really imprecise term. Your liver makes something called VLDL, which is a large lipoprotein. And that is identified because it's got a single ApoB molecule on the surface. It's like a swipe card. Then that VLDL molecule goes through your circulation and it drops off some of its cargo because it's a, it's like a delivery truck. And some of that cargo includes triglycerides and cholesterol, and it shrinks a little bit. And as it gets a bit smaller, we rename it. It's exactly the same particle, still got that same swipe card, the ApoB100 on the, in the membrane, but we call it an IDL, an intermediate density lipoprotein. Then it keeps, it finishes the delivery route, delivers a bit more cargo, gets a bit smaller, and then it's an LDL, low density lipoprotein. But it's still got that single molecule on it, still the same particle that was released by the liver, and then it gets taken back up by the liver. Now, the only reason it would not get taken back up by the liver is if that ApoB100 molecule was damaged. That's a swipe card that allows it to get back into the liver, that allows the liver to recognise it. And the things that would damage it include sugar damage, glycation damage, and oxidation damage, which you can get from seed oil. So having something like a donut, ice donut that's cooked in seed oil would be absolutely toxic. You get the sugar damage and oxidation damage all combined. You damage this ApoB100, this ApoB100 particle accumulates in the blood. But you also have to understand that the ApoB100 is found on the VLDL and the IDL. And we know, we know that LDL levels are associated with longevity. But VLDL levels, interestingly enough, they're triglyceride rich. That's how we actually estimate how much triglycerides you have is look at the VLDL. The VLDL is associated with mortality, not longevity. So we've got one group of ApoB containing proteins that is associated with increased life, another group that's associated with reduced life, and somehow we're meant to know the relative contribution of each to the ApoB 100. So if you're looking at it like that, you say there's a bit of an information gap here. And if I could do something called an LDL subfraction, which we don't need to get into now, but it's just a more elaborate way of doing the test, we get that bit more information. Now, furthermore, we do know that the number of these ApoB particles, I said that if that swipe card is damaged, then the LDL can't get taken out of the circulation and it will essentially accumulate in your circulation. So you can end up with a whole lot of these LDL particles, which do contain ApoB100 on them, if you've got a lot of glycation and oxidation damage going on. So what that tells us is that if we do, and statistically speaking, having a lot of these, they're basically small, dense, particles, if we have a lot of these accumulating in our blood, then that's suggestive that we're having too much sugar, having too much oxidation, stress, whatever else. It might be what we're inhaling from pollution, what have you. It might be mold exposure, whatever, but there's something that's damaging our body and damaging our LDL. And the damaged LDL is associated with the problem, but not the healthy LDL. DoctorsToTrust.com, world's number one site for short, annotated nutrition videos designed to share with loved ones.